Yo, it's sad. It's sad, right? You know, since Vaughn died, I was like, damn, where's Crazy Story 4, 5, and 6 at? We need that. You know, finally, they're doing some of his posthumous releases justice in terms of production and shit. There was some shit that came out right after Vaughn died that I was like, y'all y'all just wanted to throw this together real quick and put this out. They just say, fuck Vaughn Legacy, we need the money. Right. But then I realized, I said, you know what? 1090 Jakes got them, uh, got them crazy stories, bro. He got like a four, five, six, seven, and eighth crazy story now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, it's not even the type of shit where I could be like, you just seen too many movies. It's more so the type of shit where it's like, everything I've seen, okay, like, it's some shit I've seen. But the little details that you say happened that miraculously made it okay for you in whatever way, I've never seen. I've seen people beat shit off technicalities. I've seen people beat bodies off having illegally tinted windows. Damn. That's how you know the glass quality. When you do that shit, the bowl piece is straight, the fucking piece is straight, but you drop the weed everywhere. Anyway, so yeah, I've seen shit where, okay, last crazy story, the last crazy story this motherfucker had was he went to Boston because he needed a gun in Miami and couldn't get a gun, or he needed a gun in Florida and couldn't get a gun in Florida, which I'd probably be able to get a gun in Florida, and I probably don't know half the people he knows in Florida. I count like two hands the amount of people I know in Florida. So that's, that's crazy, uh, part one, unbelievable part one of Crazy Story 5, uh, released, produced by, uh, 1090 Jakes. Unbelievable part two of the same crazy story is, somehow manages to get a gun in Boston, despite not being able to get a gun in Florida, when well, I'm pretty sure you could just find guns in trash cans in certain parts of Miami and shit. I don't know if you could do that in Detroit, in Miami, with all that voodoo shit going on. The type of shit that that shit sometimes ask of people? Bro. Bro. There's certain cities like, why do you think it's called Pistol Wave in New Haven? That's that's like probably like that, Waterbury, Hartford, Bridgeport, or those types of cities around here where you could just find a gun, right? You know, it's not the only cities where you could get someone to illegally sell you a gun, but, you know, because there's more of those, but it, those are the types of cities where you'll just find. You go on a rooftop, just find some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, and even then, it would definitely be much more easier in Florida. <laughs> you know what I'm, I would imagine. Um, especially like, like I said, parts of Miami. So I, pr I promise you, you walk around Little Haiti enough and manage to not get killed for for looking like you just a CI as a motherfucker. You could probably find one just like strewn in the trash can somewhere. Now, if you're a felon, getting bullets might be a little hard. But at the same time, the type of people down there and the way that certain gun charges down there are like misdemeanors. You know what I'm saying? You could probably get someone to put the gas in your car for you if you can't do it yourself. And do so a lot easier <laughs> than somewhere where it's a fucking big ass fed case and shit for all that type of shit. In, in a lot of cases <coughs> out here even that creates like some fed type shit especially if there's priors that are of a, of a firearm nature i know then it goes federal <coughs> not only is he going to a place where it's much more restrictive with firearms with harsher penalties and managing to get a firearm no he robs people with that firearm <coughs> gets pepper sprayed Puts that firearm back in his known residence. And, uh, <coughs> you know, everything's just like kosher. The police show up. They, they, they arrest him and don't even search the residence. That does not happen. That does not happen. The police do not care if they have to wait out there for four hours to get authorization to go in your house. They're not leaving your house without that gun. That's part of their training. And they train and it's like, if we hear on the radio, main with a gun. And we catch the main, 
Imagine the description to a T right down to what he's wearing and everything. If we don't catch that gun, that means that gun could get used on one of us. That's a crazy story. If you were to count his and King Vaughn's crazy stories together like I'm doing, that's crazy story number like five or six, right? Now, here comes here comes the newest crazy story from Mr. 109 Jakes. Gets jumped. In a full main cell, gets jumped, right? And then he just decides, oh, well, I'm going to write a statement and call it filing a grievance. Those are two completely different things. Okay, if you have a grievance filed in your paperwork, it's not going to affect you with your homies at all. Especially if it's some shit where they could see why you filed a grievance. There's there's homies that was down with all that type of shit with me that said you should really file a grievance for this or that or the third. You feel what I'm saying? That's not something that'll get you in no type of hot water. As long as it's a grievance against CEOs, correctional institution, you're not there's no uh convicts or inmates. Named in the shit, right? I like how G-Face calls everyone inmates. So there's a difference between an inmate and a convict. That's all I'm going to say. Like, I'm probably one of the youngest and last living convicts that I've ever known people refer to as a convict. <laughs> the story gets crazier. 1090 Jakes goes on live with some dude. The dude proceeds to tell him, as if it was a better option, Basically say, well, why didn't you just say you didn't see who hit you? So, you in a full main cell. What the fuck do you think is going to happen if you just say, I don't know who hit me? The CO's going to come in with that goddamn little ass camera. You know, Lieutenant Alexander come, come in with the Sony camera I want to shoot my music videos. <laughs> and they're going to they gonna ask everybody, take off your shirt. And put your hands like this or like this. And when you do that, they're going to look at whoever got red marks and shit. I've had it to a point where and I had nothing to do with it. But they really was looking at taking me too because of how my hands is always red like this. And I had nothing to do with it. I literally stepped over the dude that was knocked out to go use the phone. So making sure I ain't touch him so I, it was clear for the camera. I was not helping cover nothing up. That's one thing everyone will tell you. If you see someone get knocked the fuck out, don't do nothing. If you do anything to help them, you're, and it goes down, you're all going to get caught, uh, caught up with, with trying to cover it up. So, <laughs> long story short, he then proceeds to say, now in explaining this, which I don't get why I hit that dude on the phone said, you should have just said you don't. Bro, it's a full main cell. There's only three people who could have done it. You saying you don't know who hit you is as good as dry snitching. Like, this motherfucker really just, like, tried to, like, say. And the fucked up thing was, is, like, Jake probably put him on the phone because he was black. I'm just keeping it a stack. That's not no racist shit. That's keeping it a thousand. He put him on that damn phone because he was black. It looks good for the camera. You feel what I'm saying? Granted, that's not the type of black person you want because I could tell 1090 Jake's probably been in more real situations than whoever that was. You see what I'm saying? I don't even know no black people like that. I don't even know no black people who are going to come on here and say, basically, you should have dry snitched. That wouldn't have that have been better. Like, you don't know yourself. You obviously don't. And Jake faced when he said it was like, but, but bro, do you, want, do you, you probably don't even realize what you just said. I think when he said that, Jake realized the type of person he was talking to was not who that person was portraying to be. You're in a goddamn four baby cell, bro. Four people. Four people in one cell, bro. You the victim. That leaves only three possibilities. 
The process of elimination is going to go hella fucking quick when it's only four people they got to go ahead and deduce. Technically only three, because they already deduced that you the victim. You're just going to subtract everything else one by one. <laughs> Even with the dude using a sock with a rock in it, rock, rock on it, there's certain <coughs> body language you give up after you just hit somebody that you can't control. Um, just like how shaking right before you're about to hit somebody is one of those things you can't control that you're going to give off before you're about to do some violent ass shit sometimes. That can also be common when after you just done some violent shit, especially if the COs pulled up like right then. So with me, if they had pulled up, if it was me who did it and they pulled up anywhere within a half hour after, just the physiological signs of me having, you know, just done some hot shit, that adrenaline's not going to go away as soon as the hot shit's over. And that's what causes those physiological signs. And the COs know this. They're trained to look for that shit, more so probably than regular cops, because they don't have to go through firearms training or nothing unless they go through firearms specialization to work in the tower. So that's, that's my whole thing. Crazy, crazy Jake, crazy Jake. Crazy Jake's got like crazy story four through eight. He finished it for King Vaughn. King Vaughn died, so he said, I'm going to keep it going. He got like four of them shits of just him talking. Crazy ass stories that don't make sense. Four. On my mama. I forget what the other two was, but those were the two that really stood out to me. Because between the fact that he called filing a statement, it don't matter if you put the statement inside the grievance, bro. You didn't. If it was just a grievance and your issue was with the COs, why bring them people name up? Why not just say I had issue with other inmates? Leave it at that. Don't even say cellmates and just throw the rest of it. Listen, they gonna piece the rest together by themselves and then you didn't snitch. Because either they don't piece it together or if they do, it was pieced together by themselves and you tried your best to keep it to a, a bare minimum that, you know what I'm saying, didn't throw nobody under the bus so that they might even just look at it most likely at I had issue with COs at face value. But you saying it specifically who hit you... You saying this, that, the, like, it's great. And why is there two cherries in the same set? <laughs> you got Jake Cherry and Mark Cherry. That's insane. That's insane. Oh, my mama, that's insane. It might have been done. But so, see, I would have said that was done by, like, alphabetical order. But then they got some random dude with an H right there. And I'm like, what type of cell is this? Now, to mention, ain't no facility I've been in sell people by alphabetical order. It just can't be done. There's, like, too many factors that go into it that make that problematic, especially in, in certain jurisdictions and whatnot. And even if it's not a problem with you, just because other people have profiles and shit, it's just not feasible. Either way, man, it's, it's just like, come on, Jake. Come on. I know, I know with me... The way I grew up and shit, and we grew up in, in some ways kind of similar. You know, I don't know if it's so much for the, the new generation, because I've heard even people who are outside my generation from other things within the same thing trying to tell me. But it's not that bad if, like, and I'm like, what do you mean? It's specifically told to you you're not supposed to make your shit look bad and have that get back to your people. I can't go into that much further, but you get my point, like... He's making shit look really bad and having the fact that he's a treasurer. Not to mention, you got every goddamn prosecutor, DA, fucking judge, special agent in the state of fucking the South. It's not even just in one state saying for no reason in all these other cases that have nothing to do with them. Hey, this white boy treasurer of G-Shine, y'all. Yeah, yeah, this white boy is treasurer of interstate commerce, G-Shine. Come on now. And no one has the comments to just pull them aside. I'm not talking about doing it, but just ask questions. I'm out of this bitch, man. It's crazy.